Welcome students, this is your exponential homework uh, video and your fifth six weeks test review. Uh, our fifth six weeks test is going to be on 413 and this homework assignment will also be due on 413. Uh, I'm going to do two problems off of your exponential homework and then I'm going to go into the fifth six weeks test review. We'll also do a little bit of review in class before we take our test so you'll be good and ready. Alright, so we learned in the last class period that the general form was y equals a times 1 plus or minus r to the t, where a is the beginning amount, r is the rate as a decimal, t is the time in years. We use plus for growth if we know the number is going up. We use minus for decay if we know the number is coming down. The starting salary for a new employee is $25,000. Important word, starting, 25000 the salary for the employee increases by 8%. What is the salary after 10 years? So increase tells us that growth is happening. So that tells us that we're going to use the formula 1 plus r to the t. Our beginning amount is our starting amount, so that's 25,000 times 1 plus our rate, 8%. Move the decimal two places, so that's 0.08. If you're not sure about that on your test, you divide it by 100 on your calculator and it'll give you that. And then t is time, that's 10 years. And we told you you could leave it in this form if you did not have a calculator. Um, I'm going to go ahead and type it into my calculator so I can give you an idea of what the actual answer is. 25,000 parentheses 1 plus 0 0.08 to the tenth. This is money, so I can use decimals. It's $53,973.12. It should have increased, and it did, so I think we're on the right track. Okay. Uh, remember we talked about the other day that they may, on the checkpoint, combine those to be 1.08, but it's the same word. Next one. A $25,000 car decreases at 12%. Determine the value of car in 17 years. So we know the car started out at 25,000. We know that our rate is 12%, 1, 2. So that's 0 0.12. We know that our time is 17 years. And decrease tells us to use the subtract formula. So 1 minus the rate to the t. So it's 25,000 times 1 minus 0 0.12 to the 17th. If we do the simplifying like they're going to do on your checkpoint, it's 1 minus 0 0.12. So this is 0 0.88 to the 17th. And either one of these is acceptable answers for your homework. Since I have a calculator in my hand, I'm going to go ahead and evaluate it. Minus 0.12 to the 17th. Again, this is money because it's the value of a car. So it's $2,845.41. All right, now we're going to get into some review questions. All right, so you're going to need to know how graphs differ and how they're alike. If we were to type these into our calculator, because this is a negative out in front of here, it's going to be facing down like that. Because this is positive, it's going to be facing up like that. So when we read the first answer choice, it says the graph of negative 3 fourths x squared opens downward, so that's good. Negative 3 fourths opens upward, that's wrong, so now B is out of the question. Um, C says it opens upward, so that's out of the question. And so now, even if I can't figure out the wider or narrower part, I'm down to just two answer choices. Okay? So you might be able to tell, if you graph them at the same time, you might be able to tell the difference, which one is wider or narrower. You can also tell by the numbers. Negative 3 fourths is negative 0.75. 4 thirds is 1.3. So we're talking about this one. Because that's a smaller number, it is going to be uh, wider than the other one. So A is the correct answer. It is not more narrow. Remember, error, when we talked about more narrow, this was when we talked about exercise. So the bigger A is the skinnier it is. All right, this is going all the way back to factoring. So we do a times c, so that's two times negative one is negative two. This is a one underneath, 
So we're looking for things that multiply to be negative 2, but add to be 1. So our numbers are negative 1, 2, 1, negative 2, and that's it. So to get a positive 2, this is our option, negative 1 and 2. We write out our four parts, 2x squared minus 1x plus 2x minus 1. And we group each set. This has an x in common, so the x comes out front, and we're left with 2x minus 1. This set has nothing in common, so we pull the 1 out front, and we're left with 2x minus 1. So this part is 2x minus 1. The outside part is x plus 1, and so we're looking for something like that, which is right there, C. Remember, you could also type this in Y1 and these all in Y2 and check the table. And if you have equal tables, then you'll have the right answer also. And you could do that on a lot of the questions on this test. All right, what are the solutions to the equation below? So solutions are the same as x-intercepts, are the same as roots, are the same as zeros. So we need a picture of the graph to be able to tell that. We learned in class that this can't say 6, so that guy has to be moved over. When we move him over, we get x squared plus x. When he moves over, he becomes minus 6 equals 0. So I typed that into my calculator, and I have that picture right here for you. So when we look at that picture, we're looking at where does it cross right here, and where does it cross right here. That's negative, uh, positive 1, 2, so positive 2. That's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, so 2 and negative 3. So not right, looks good, not right, not right. So B is the right answer. So anytime you need to find those, you can type those in. Remember, we can do it where you do y1 is 0 and y2 is the function. This one, I didn't even do that because it showed up so so pretty with the whole numbers here. But if you see decimals, you might want to do that. All right, this was quadratic formula. I can tell by the way these are written. Quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. It was important in quadratic formula to know a, b, and c. Quadratic formula also had to have it solved for 0, so this can't be over here. It has to be moved over. So this becomes x squared minus 4x. A negative 1 changes to a plus 1. So this is our a, 1. This is our b, negative 4. And this is our c, positive 1. So we plug this in. So the negative of negative 4, so the opposite of negative 4, plus or minus, square root of b squared is negative 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1 over 2 times 1. So the opposite of negative 4 is positive 4, so that gets rid of a and c, plus or minus. I always type in this whole part right here into my calculator. So from parentheses to parentheses, so I did parentheses, negative 4, parentheses squared, minus 4 times 1 times 1. And I hit enter, and I get 12. And 2 times 1 is 2. And at that point, I am done because D is no longer the right answer. B has to be the right answer, and they have left it in that form for me. Number 13 it says multiply the binomial. We multiply binomials typically through the box method, so we're going to set up our box here. We'll put one of them across the top, 3x minus 4, the other down the side. We multiply to fill the box, so 6 times 3 is 18. x and x is x squared. 6 times a negative 4 is negative 24x. 7 times 3 is a positive 21x. 7 times a negative 4 is negative 28. This is always the front of the answer, 18x squared, so that gets rid of a. This is always the back of the answer negative 28, that doesn't get rid of any of them. So now I just need to figure out what's 21 minus 24, or what's negative 24 plus 21. And in either case, when I type that into my calculator, I get negative 3x. So this is the right answer. And again, you could type this in y1, these in y2, check your table. And you can do that on a lot of problems um, throughout this test and on your start test. All right. That is the end of the video. Those were actual test questions, so if you want to go back through and make sure you've got those answers written down somewhere um, for when you take your test on Monday, you'll have them. That'll be five questions already done on your test, and you'll concentrate on the other 15 of them. Thank you for watching all the way to the end.